Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. In earth. In earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he is good. For he is good. And his mercy endures forever. And his mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. For he is good. For he is good. And his mercy endures forever. And his mercy endures forever. In Jesus' holy name we pray. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Today's scripture reading will come from Hosea chapter 14, 1 through 9. O Israel, return unto the Lord thy God, for thou hast fallen by thine iniquity. Take with you words, and turn to the Lord. Say unto him, Take away all iniquity, and receive us graciously. So will we render the calves of our lips. Assure shall not save us. We will not ride upon horses. Neither will we say any more to the work of our hands, Ye are our gods. For in thee the fatherless findeth mercy. I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely, for mine anger is turned away from him. I will be as the dew unto Israel. He shall grow as the lily, and cast forth his roots as Lebanon. His branches shall spread, and his beauty shall be as the olive tree, and his smell as Lebanon. They that dwell under his shadow shall return. They shall revive as the corn, and grow as the vine. The scent thereof shall be as the wine of Lebanon. Ephraim shall say, what have I to do any more with idols? I have heard him and observed him. I am like a green fir tree. From me is thy fruit found. Who is wise, and he shall understand these things. Prudent, and he will know them. For the words of the Lord are right, and the just shall walk in them, but the transgressors shall fall therein. Again, I have read to you Hosea chapter 14, verses 1 through 9. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his word in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 give our glory to God today, to our Heavenly Father. Let us sing a great song. Someone. Why do we sing? When we lift our hands to Jesus. Times we may be crying. At times we may be crying. But nothing's even wrong. And nothing's even wrong. Come everybody. I sing. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow. His eye is on the sparrow. That's the reason why. That's the reason why. I sing. Come everybody. Glory, hallelujah. Glory.
to Jesus. What do we really mean? And someone next to you may be wondering. When we sing our song, at times we may be crying. But nothing's even wrong. Sing with me, I sing. Sing because I'm free. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow. His eye is on the sparrow. That's the reason why. That's the reason why. Come on, everybody. Glory. Song will never end. And the song will never end. Someone asked you. Somebody asked Was it just a show? Was it just a show? Lift your hands and be a witness. Lift your hands and be a witness. And tell the whole world no. And tell the whole world no. And when we cross that river together. And when we cross that river. To study war no more. To study war. Let us sing our song to Jesus, an amazing song. Sing our song to Jesus, the one who we adore. The one who we adore. I sing. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. Jesus. 
Yes, you are. King of kings and Lord of lords, you are the great I am. Oh, oh, oh. your name. Some music to get you, get you going, get you pumped, get you hyped, get you ready to go. Praises to the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and peace to everybody that came out in the name of Jesus. Peace to everybody on the phone line, on the internet. It's a blessing to have you, and it's a blessing for me to stand here before you guys on the Lord's Sabbath day. The title of today's lesson, if you got a handout, the ones who don't online, is "The Truth Shall Set You Free." And you know, I was inspired to do this lesson. I was going through a couple of things during this week. You know, I was dealing with a few people during this week. And it's, you know, when Jesus made that statement, people don't realize the significance of it when he said, the truth's going to set you free. Because right now, and it has been since the beginning of time, that we seem to not understand that for practically the whole world is living a lie. And... 
the thing that they call practice and what they call worship is just not the truth. And you get some people that will say, you know, you know, I'm doing the best I can or I'm doing, hey, regardless of what you think you're doing, if it ain't lining up with the truth, you're wasting your time. And you, we have to one, I have to, one thing we have to do is realize that from the beginning, hey, it's, it's been on the table since Adam and Eve. It's been a lie. So everything you thought you knew, you got to throw all that out. And then you become free. And it's a blessing to have some knowledge and understanding exactly what the Lord is trying to show us. And trust me, it's few in number. Because they said the road to salvation is narrow and few people are going to be on it. So the road to destruction is broad. And there's a lot of people on that road. So it's just a blessing to be even counted in that number. You know, I just look, at, and it just amazes me sometimes because you look and you see all these people. They say it's about practically about 8 billion people in the world. Well, man, it ain't even a, a, a tenth, probably 1% of that to even know and understand what the Lord is showing us. But then again, that, that's just the way the world is. The world is in a bad state. I was talking to a couple of brothers on the, on the job site. And they was, you know, they always want to start talking about the tragic events that's happening in the world. They want to get into disgust and all that. You know, and sometimes I can chop it up with them, you know. Normally times you can go and debate with stuff when you start dealing with politics. But when you start dealing with the world, events and stuff, hey, they had a little young girl. Y'all probably heard little toddler died. She was, they found, police found her inside of a couch. So he wants to talk about that and address that situation. And I'm like, it's a terrible thing, you know. And it, it's a bad thing that's happening in this world. But, you know, I look at the big picture. Because he was like, oh, man, it's horrible. You know, this, this young lady, she, you know, these mothers, they don't take care of their kids. They, you know, say get. And I looked at him, and I was like, you know, I said, yeah, that's you, you, you part of the problem. And he looked at me like, you know, I, I don't think I'm. I said, hold up, hold up, hold up. I'm not saying that, you know, because you, you probably follow some of the basic laws, don't kill, don't steal, don't murder. I'm not saying you bad like that, because she did get killed, you know, some type of way. I ain't even get the rest of the news on it, but I know they found her dead, even though she was supposed to be reported missing, but she ended up being in the home. But nonetheless, he was just stating on how bad it is. And I told him, you were part of the problem. He's like, I'm part of the problem. I'm like, yeah, just because you... No, not to kill and steal. It's more righteousness than that. It's more stuff that needs to be done. So when you get into start dealing with the truth, you start to understand stuff. You know, the, how, what God wants you to do. Then he starts to think about stuff. He said, yeah, well, stuff going on like that, I can see why the Lord going to burn the earth and I wouldn't, I wouldn't be mad at him. Exactly. That's my point. Because the world has just, has just gone totally backwards. But then it's a reason for why it's going backwards, and we're going to get into it and read why it's that way. But, hey, that's the life that's, that's present today. And we're going to read about that. We're going to read about what's going on in the street. Because a lot of people ask a lot of questions about stuff that's going on, current events, why things happen this way. Hey, you want it this way. You love to have it so. Because if you didn't, you would change. Change yourself. Because you always talk about what people do, and that's what upset me the most, because they talk about what people do. No, what you need to do is do, you need to do better. Start with you. Then everything else will get better. So that's, that's what it is. They always want to point the finger and look at somebody else. Go look in the mirror. Straighten yourself out. And if everybody did that, like Michael Jackson had, you looking at the man in the mirror, look at yourself. Because when you start to do that and correct yourself, then everybody else can do the same and we all get better. Stop worrying about the world doing because you really don't care. Because if you really cared about that, you would start doing better yourself. But you love to have it so. That's why I lumped him in with everybody else. But we're going to get into this lesson. The truth shall set you free. Revelation 12. We're going we to start in Revelation 12. Because if you get to this main point here, you can probably just read this. Then you'll start to have some understanding of what's going on in the world today. Once you read this, then you, you, your eyes will be open. Because you got to understand, hey, this world is ran by Satan. We're going to read that. Most people say that. They idly talk. 
they speak a little bit, say, yeah, the devil's out there, devil's at work. You know, you have events going on, you talk to people from day to day, and you have something bad, or they have something bad, some tragic going on, they'll say, yeah, devil's busy, he busy. Yeah, yeah, he is busy. But then on the other hand, you just turn and start doing whatever you want to do. So, hey, it, it don't help nothing. you just keeping it perpetually, keep it going. Revelation 12. Revelation 12. And read at verse 12. 12 and 12. Go ahead, brother. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath. Because he knoweth that he had but a short time. So he, he's letting you know. This is Revelation. We all know if you ain't even did too much reading, you know this is the end of the Bible, right? We know we in the end. So he's telling you he come down on you. So much for him, you know, raiding the torment you in the ground. No, he's right here on the earth causing great wrath. We have to understand that. So once you get unto that understanding, then you can understand this. Go up to verse 9 and read that. Go ahead. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. So now you see he was cast out to the world, and then also we see that he deceived the whole world. So like I said, if you can read this, then you will know something. Because a lot of people say, you, you know, you, how do you guys know that y'all got it right? You probably heard that many times, or well, you guys the only one. Right here, we, you can see right here, first and foremost, you can see that Satan is ruling the whole world. He has basically deceived, or he said right here, he said, which deceived the whole world. So he deceived basically everybody for the most part. So now that you see that, then you can understand that most people are going the wrong way. So once you get that reception, then you can understand this. Go ahead, finish that. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So now you see they busy. They busy going through the earth, and you can see that right now. You step outside. That's why the kid got killed. They busy. And it's, it's a murdering going on right now today. But then once you start to understand the truth, then you start to see what's going on, if you believe it. But this is what it's saying. So he said, he said the great dragon was cast out. The old serpent called the devil and Satan was deceived the whole world. whole world practically deceived. So once you start to see this, then you can open up your mind and start to receive the word of God. He said, which is deceiving the whole earth, and his angel was cast out with him. So it's him and all the mother fallen angels are down here on this earth causing havoc. Let's go further. Let's go to Amos 8. And since they caused all this havoc, this is why we're in this state here that we're about to read in. Amos, eight, and read that one verse, eight and 11. Go ahead, my brother. Behold, the days come, said the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. So, and by him being down here on this earth, this is why we in this state. And since man rejected, God's word, this is what happened. So it's, it's a famine. See, that's how the Lord operates. Once you start to read and understand how the Lord operates, if you decide for some own whatever reason you want that you don't want the word, God will say, hey, I won't give it to you. See, that's what people think. You know, we love you. He going he gonna to do No, listen. If, he, if you decide to walk away, the Lord say, go ahead. Trust me. He, you, he shows you counts of that. He had that when he had his travel apostles with him, and he had more followers. When he told me to eat my flesh and drink my blood, they was like, oh, he's a madman. And what, they, most of them, they walked away. And you know what Jesus said? He didn't say, please, y'all, come back. Come, please come back. No, he said, he tur turned to look at the 12, which they didn't leave. They were standing right there. He said, y'all going to leave too? Because he got something to give you. And if you don't want it, hey, this is what it is. So that's why he said he, it's a famine for the word of God. That's why it's few people that's teaching it. Because, hey, if you reject it, you don't want it, hey, God ain't going to give it to you. Let's go further. Let's go to Hosea 4. Chapter 
See, they made this other Jesus, which we're going to read about, like he just, he going he to just force you to have stuff. and for, No, it don't work that way. Lord, the Lord, yeah, he want to see. They make a good twist to the stuff. Yeah, he want to save you. He want to save everybody. And he do love everybody if you do what he say. It's always the if there. They don't give you that if. They just say he love you unconditionally no matter what. No matter what, you know how you love your son. You just love him unconditionally. If your son started doing drugs and stealing stuff, yeah, you're going to love your son. going to kick his butt out. You got to get out of here. You ain't going to deal with it. See, they live with this unreality, you know, that you just, you just love and you just, you just, he just, he's just full of love and he's going to be there for you. He's there. He's there for you. He's going to be there. Yeah, he's going to be there when you do what you're supposed to do. If you don't do what you're supposed to do, he's going to bust you upside your head. See, people don't, they, you know, the nicey church, they won't say stuff like that. But when you read the book, the Lord is a killer. And if you don't do what he say, he will kill you. If you don't believe it, the Lord control the devil. He control it all. That's why you all this havoc out here. But it's, it's predicated on you, though. You doing what you're supposed to do. If you decide that you don't want to do it, hey, this is, what, this is what people love. That's why I tell them all the time. People talk about tragic events and stuff that go on. I say, what well, thing? You love to have it so. That's the way you like it. You like it like that. Because if you didn't like it like that, you would change. Start with yourself. Hosea 4. Hosea 4. And pick it up at 1. Hosea 4 and 1. Go ahead. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, no mercy, no knowledge of God in the land. So that's what happens. Because that's what it is. It's no truth. It's no mercy. No knowledge of God. So we already know what the outcome is going to be. Just the way it is here. But go ahead. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood touches blood. Ain't that what's happening outside now? And But see, then it's practical because you see, hey, ain't no knowledge here. So if you don't have no knowledge, that's it. People say, you know, got a little bit of, yeah, I know not to rob, I know not to steal. Hey, it's more to it than that. It's a lot more you need to learn. So you want to be right? So he said, by swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out, blood touches blood. You like it like that because if you didn't, you would change. But we'll skip down to verse 6 and go ahead. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. And see, this is the reason why. You, know, you got a lot of people trying to play religion. Hey, if, if you're not going under the due order how God is set up, trust me, it's not going to go right. You know, people then went and did tried to do their own thing, then fell off. You got to do what does say the Lord and the way he set it up. And if you're not going through the priest, that's why the world is in the condition it is today. Because you got another faction that's set up that sits on seven hills. That Catholic who say they the priest, hey, man, they the synagogues of Satan. And since they decide they want to step up, this is the state of the world. Because God only won't work one way. So since the priest has said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, and as long as they got their foot on our neck, they basically just basically turn around and putting their own foot on their own neck. Because without us, you ain't going to get to God because God don't change. He go on his way. So without that, you ain't going to never get the truth. So, you know, it's, it's, it's something how the Lord works. You know, you know the more he, they choke us and, and, and stress us out, the worst they condition get. And they don't realize that. So he said in verse 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou have rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou should be no priest to me. Seeing thou have forgotten the laws of thy God, I will also forget thy children. And trust me, we are forgotten big time. Because the state we in is sad. It, it is so sad. I was on the job working. I'm, I'm hearing people playing music in the middle of the afternoon. And I'm like, why are they so happy? 
all around us look like a war zone. People breaking in your cars, they stealing stuff over here. I mean, dude, there ain't nothing to be happy about. But when you ain't got no knowledge, you don't even know what's happening to you. You don't understand it. Let's go, let's go further. Isaiah 59. Most people don't care. They like to have it like this. It's a sad thing. You know, I look at family members. Look at my own family members. Mom and them, I'm like, families and them, like, they think that they're right, righteous, you know. They, they have this state that they think, like, you got far from that. And you know how I know they're far? Because when you open up the book, they don't want to hear it. It's just, it's just, it's sad. Isaiah 59. But it's the truth. So, hey, the truth, hey, they say the truth hurt, we're going to give it to you. Isaiah 59 and 1. Go ahead, brother. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. So, you know, people doing a lot of praying, mainly us as a people, but our condition don't change. And he's telling you, hey, his hand ain't short. He, he, can, he can reach out. He can, he can save you. He can get you out of that predicament. But obviously you're not doing something right. But go ahead. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you. So he would turn, like I told you. If you don't do what you're supposed to, he would turn from you. If you sin it, he would, he would hide his face from you. Go ahead. That he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue have muttered, muttered perverseness. That's what I was trying to tell the brothers on the job site. It's like... The things you doing and you saying, it's all perverseness. You, you don't even know it because you don't know God's law. So if you don't know the law, you don't even know what you're doing that's bad or good. And he's telling you right here in, in verse 2, he said, But your iniquities have separated you between your, from your God and your sins. He have hid his face from you, and he will not hear you. So if you don't know God's laws and statutes and commandments, and you're just constantly trying to do your own will or what you think is right, and you decide, oh, this tragic stuff that happened to me, I'm going to go pray. He will not hear you. He ain't hearing you. You need to know and understand what it is that God will have you to do. Stop going off of what you think and how you feel. People always go about something, you know, I respect you. You're supposed to respect me. You know, you're supposed to respect. Hold up, I ain't going to respect a lie because the foundation has been a lie. So I'm not going to respect that. They respect, oh, you brother, I, I respect your stuff. You should really respect me. No, I'm not. For once, when you're dealing with religion, we're supposed to be dealing with God, right? So if I'm going to respect something, I'm going to respect God. I'm not respect what I got or you. I'm going to respect what the words say. That's what we put our respect on. We're talking about some, you're not tolerant to this. It ain't mine. I'm, tolerant. I'm not tolerant to, to any of that stuff. We're just being tolerant to God. Let's separate some how you feel, what your church do, what my church do. No, let's do what God say. That's what we're supposed to be tolerant to, being obedient. That's what we have a problem at. But go ahead, brother. Verse 3. Four. Four. Go ahead. None calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. That's exactly what they always do. But go ahead, skip down to verse 7. Their feet run the evil, and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Wasting and destruction are in their paths. That, see, that's what happened. He got some reverb on his mic. See if y'all can't fix that. But that's what happened. That, that goes on all the time. And when you don't know God, trust me, I was running to and fro too. My thoughts were straight evil. Because you don't know God. So you always thinking evil. That's why the world got drowned. Because you constantly, your thoughts was evil. That's why the world's going to get burned up. Because we're going to read. Because your thoughts are evil. So you run to that. You run to that. Go ahead. Eight. The way of peace they know not. And there is no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. Therefore is judgment far from us. Neither does judgment, does justice overtake us. We wait for light, but behold obscurity. For brightness, 
but we walk in darkness. That's the that's practically the whole world. They in darkness. But then the scripture tell you that men love darkness. They love it because that's what they're used to. But we already know who bringing that darkness is Satan. So you used to walking with him. But go ahead. Ten. We grope for the wall like the blind, and we grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday as in the night. We are in desolate places as dead men. Go ahead. We roar all like bears and mourn sore like doves. We look for judgment, but there is none. For salvation, but there is far off from us. See, once Israel get tripped up and messed up, hey, the whole world is going to the bottom. But go ahead. Twelve. For our transgressions are multiplied before thee, and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us, and as for our iniquities, we know them. In, tr in transgressing and lying against the Lord and departing away from our God, that, speaking. And they, they going to be doing that all day tomorrow. You know, it's one thing to just do your own thing. It's another thing when you're lying on the Lord. And they're they going to do that wholesale tomorrow. But go ahead. Speaking oppression and revolt. Conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood. Exactly. Stuff that's not even written. Telling you things like you going to heaven after you die. Just foolishness. Go ahead. 14. And judgment is turned away backward. And judgment standeth afar off. For truth is fallen in the street, and iniquity cannot enter. So that, yeah. And that's what's out in the, in the street. <laughs> that, it, it, it ain't no truth out there whatsoever. But go ahead. Yea, truth faileth, and he that departed from evil maketh himself a prey. And that happens all the time, because soon as you want to try to do what's right in the wicked world that's out there, you are the prey. They want to cut you off from everything. They want to push you off to the side because you decide you don't want to do this. Try to get you to eat something that you don't want to eat. Look at you like you the one in the wrong. So that's what happened. He said, yea, truth felleth, and he that depart from me will make himself a prey. Yeah, you will pray. They're going to pray upon you. They're going to look at you like you got the tail because you trying to do something right. But it's a wicked world. So you can expect that. Because this is what's going on out here. They love it like all that killing and, and stealing and robbing and adultery. They like it like that. Because if they did, they wouldn't change. That's why I get tired of people trying to tell me and talk to me about what's going on in the world. And you see this event. You see that event. Man, Jesus was telling me hey, when they start bringing it to him, he came. He told them, you remember that tower they fell? Pilate mingled them. God just told him, hey, yeah, just kill them people. Yeah, He just told them, hey, you need to repent or you're going to be next. That was his answer. It wasn't no make me feel good or what can we do? We can powwow, let's march, let's down the street. No, he said, get your act together. Do that. If we all, some, somebody trying to talk to you, that's that, because it burns me up. I don't want to hear about it. Yeah, it's a tragic event. Yeah, it's terrible what's happening in the world. Yeah, but it ain't going to solve nothing. It ain't going to stop anything because you continue to do what you not supposed to do so hey you love it you love it like that so just keep it going so he said 15 he said yeah they fell up he that departed from evil make himself a prey and the lord saw it and it displeased him there was no judgment it ain't no judgment out there that's why it continued to happen because nobody want to correct what's going on so since we're going to have this problem it's going to continue to go on and hey they like it like that that's why the lord going to burn it up Got to burn this place up. Too much blood touching blood. It's too much. It's polluted. They got, that's a righteous judgment. Let's go to the New Testament. Second Timothy. I don't want to get y'all angry when somebody try to tell you about a tragic event, but man. <laughs> They just, they be burning me up, man. It burns me up because I know the big picture around it. You know they don't want to hear it. It's like talking on deaf ears. You don't want to change. So I don't even, why are we even talking about this? I just look at them telling you the problem. That's what I tell them. They looking at me like, well, I guess I ain't going to talk to you no more. Well, don't talk to me, please. <laughs> Se Second Timothy 3. But then we got to know this because this is the time we in. So we got to deal with reality. You know, 
I mean, it is what it is. But I just let them know, hey, that's the way you want it. 2 Timothy 3, and pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead, my brother. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Now, people say this all the time. You know, they say, you know, they always ask the questions, you know, how we know we in the end, how we know we in the last days. You know, those questions always come up. But here it is right here. He said, know this also that the last time, perilous times to come. So let's see if this stuff has come. Go ahead, verse 2. For men shall be lovers of their, their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud. That sound like the music. Go ahead. <laughs> Blasphemers, disobedient to parents. That sound like all the children out there on the streets. You don't believe it? Go get on the, on the public transit. You'll see that all the time. Go ahead. Unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despises of those that are good. So now we can not, we already answered that question. Are we in the last days? We already know. But go ahead, finish that, brother. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Oh, man, go ahead, brother. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Yeah, they, all, such, they, they all act like they do, right? They act like they're holy, right? But hey, but what? Verse 6. From such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep in the houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers' lusts. Yeah, that's what I, I, you read this thing. I was thinking about how Brother Elias always said. He was like, I was trying to look for God when the church. They were like, hey, they doing this already. I do this on the street. But hey, this is what they doing. You going to church, that's what's up. You know, so he was like, man, forget that. But go ahead. First up. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And that's the thing. They sitting in there, and that's a sad thing. That you in there, all you be in there, you see some of them elderly ones in there. They've been in the church for 40 and 50 years. That, that is something. They ever thinking they learning something, but they ain't never getting the truth. So how are you going to be set free? Because you bound. You bound to what Satan have, have in this world. You bound to that. And the only way you can get free of that is to get in the knowledge of God. That's the truth, and we're going to read that. Let's go to Isaiah 30. You know, they bound to that old stuff, being in that church all those years. But then again, like I said before, they love to have it so, right? This is what they want. Isaiah 30, and pick it up at verse 8. 30 and 8. Go ahead, my brother. Now go, write it before them in the table, and note it in a book. The Lord said, let me get, let me get, let me get, let me just have this written down. Which right now, we're reading it, right? Yeah. Go ahead, what, what we read? Go ahead. That it may be for the time to come forever and ever. So it's going to last forever. Because you say his word lasts forever, trust me. It, it's, it's forever, and it's been going on. He didn't know, Isaiah didn't know this down thousands of years ago. But let's go ahead and read. Praise God for that, right? Yes, sir. Go ahead, brother. That this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, see not. So see, they telling the people who come to show, seers are the prophets of God, right? They trying to teach them and tell them something. Hey, they saying, man, dude, we don't want to see that. We don't want to hear that. That's what happens every time. If, go get a book. Go talk to your family. Y'all already know. They be like, ah, uh, don't bring that here. But this is this, what it's saying, right? Say, don't see not, don't bring that. I don't want that. Go ahead. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. He said, don't, 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 don't teach us right things. What, what, we, what, would I want, what I need to hear? Because my mom told me that. I, I just go to the church because they make me feel good. I go to church to make feel good. I don't want to hear all that negative stuff. I got enough. I want to feel good. So this is what they say. He said, don't prophesy over here. Don't tell me none of that stuff. I don't want to hear none of that. I want to hear something. This is what I want to hear. Go ahead. Speaking to a smooth thing. See, I want smooth. You know, they used to have that NUA jazz session, you know, smooth sound. That's, they they want to hear something smooth. That's why they be playing a lot of music. Just relax. Make me relax. Make me feel good. But what goes on with that feel good? Go ahead. Prophesy deceit. See? But see, at, at, at the same time, while, he, while he's giving you that smooth sand and that smooth music and that good stuff, he lying to you. And that's going to mess you up. That's going to get you cut off. 
But then, hey, if you don't want the truth, hey, you ain't going to never be free. You're going to be bound. So you got to make up your choice of what you want to do. Let's go to 2 Peter. We're trying to open up your mind so you can think. We're going to give you the truth. We're going to give you what thus said the Lord. You can do whatever you want to do with it after that. 2 Peter 3. And pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead, my brother. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by the way of remembrance. So that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to stir your mind up so you can understand and know what the mind of God is. But go ahead. That ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandments of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. What no. we why he's saying of the holy prophet. Remember they they telling you you don't you, that stuff is good to read, but you have to, he telling you to go back and read that stuff. Study that stuff. That's what you need. But go ahead. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. We already been seen that, right? We read that, right? That's the days we in. But go ahead. And saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep. All things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. It's amazing because people still say this stuff today. Oh, that was that's a long time ago. You, you still talking about that stuff that happened way back then? <laughs> like, you guys, you don't understand it. But then the Lord write this stuff down because he already know what they're going to say and how people going to react and what they're going to do when you bring the word to them. They're going to tell you that, oh, man, they've been saying that stuff for a long time. But for what? For this they willingly are ignorant of. That by the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth staying out of the water and in the water. Trust me, I had somebody tell me this. You, I was trying to show him about Noah. I said, people, the world's bad, you know, and, you know, the Lord going to do just like he did in Noah. He was like, man, you talking about that old stuff way back then? But he's telling you right here. He's giving you that example. But go ahead. Six, whereby the world that was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store. So he, he letting you know, hey, this is the same conversation that people have back then that you saying that you don't believe right now. That's the same thing they did. And he, they drowned them to death. Go ahead. Reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Now, he didn't took you all the way down to the end. He's telling you what's going on. So go ahead and keep saying those things and see what happens. Go ahead. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. You see, when you don't have no understanding, this is what happened. But go ahead, because you just be talking. A lot of times people just be speaking. They don't have no knowledge of God, don't have no, ain't never read the Bible, but they're going to try to tell you something. You know, you, you come up to somebody, you try to show them something with the book. The Lord say this is this. You know, Lord say this is, you know, this is a seven day. You know, you can't do this. They say, you can't judge me. Where is that at? I, I know it's somewhere. It's somewhere in there. You don't even know where it's at. But you're going you gonna to tell me something. Trust me. You're in trouble. Go ahead. Nine. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men can count slackness, but is long suffering toward uh, to us ward. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. See, that's the grace of God, and people just want to step all over it. But that's to their own demise. Finish that last one. Go ahead. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. And that's what's going to happen. We talked, I talked about that in the opening. That's, that's what needs to happen. Because ain't nobody want to change and do what's right. So, hey, you can wait on that fire to come. Let's go to, let's go to the New Testament. Let's go to Matthews. He going to get rid of everybody that ain't doing righteousness. They all getting, they getting out of here. Matthew 13, and pick it up at verse 41. 13 
and 41. Go ahead. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity. See, and I'm, I'm trying to hope people listening understand this one thing. The road that you own is, is not a good road. And the, he said, the Son of Man shall send his angels, and they that shall gather them out of his kingdom of things that offend. If you offend in God's kingdom, you're in trouble. And them that what? Do iniquity. And them that do iniquity, that's sin. And sin is transgressing of the law. So if you're not doing the law, you just basically, you sin it. People that don't understand that. And you're going to be part of the one he's going to gather up to burn. But go ahead. And shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. This is what keep people in order. When they talk about fear, hey, who wants to burn forever? Wailing and gnashing of teeth. You don't want no pain like that. Trust me. You don't want it on you. But if you don't listen or be obedient, that's exactly what you're going to get. You know, they came with that saying, a hard head make us all behind. That's, that's what's going to happen to you if you don't want to listen. Lord is not playing with you. Let's go to John. John 16. John 16, we're going to pick up at verse 7. Go ahead, brother. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So that's what the comforter do. He come to bring the truth. And he's going to reproof you. Because right now, nobody wants no rebuke, no reproof, none of that. You try to tell somebody up there, they tell about you can't judge them. Well, what about reproof and rebuke? What about correction? You get, you've been corrected your whole life. When it comes to the word of God, you don't want no correction. Oh, that, that is not going to pass with God. I'm telling you, it ain't going to work. When it comes, it's correction all the time. But then when God's word comes on the table, you decide, yeah, I don't want to listen to that. Okay. You, you can get some of them brimstones. But go ahead. Nine. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my father, and ye see me no more. Of this judgment. Is, this is about when Jesus was about to, you know, he was about to be crucified, so he's about to go, he's about to um, die. But go ahead. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. So he's telling you the prince of this world. But we know Satan is controlling the world, right? But go ahead. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear. That shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. And that's what the spirit of truth do. He's going to show you what's going on. That's why when you read through the prophets and you see the apostles, they told you about what it was in the last days. We read that, right? Because the spirit of truth showed them what's going to go on. And we're reading it now. He's telling us exactly what it is so that when it goes on, you know what's going on. That's, that's the beautiful thing. When you're sitting out here and you first learn the word of God, you sitting out here and you look, you start listening to the, the preacher and he's talking and he's saying stuff. Then you go out in the street and they say the same thing he's going to say. You know, you're like, he said they was going to say that. Because that's you, you know what you're dealing with. You know you're dealing with the truth. When they speak like that and you go out in the world and you say something and they use that same excuse, hey, you know what devils you're dealing with. But go ahead. 14. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. And that's what the Spirit of Truth do. It brings the knowledge. We have some understanding. We know what we're doing. It's not like we're guessing around here. We know exactly what we're doing. We know what we're teaching. We know what we're learning. Let's go further. Let's go to 1 John. First John 4. 
And it's going to show you that right here. 1 John 4, and, and read that verse 4. 4 and 4. Go ahead. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So we know what we're doing. We're trying to uh, overcome Satan. And greater is God's word which is in us that give us the knowledge and understanding to overcome Satan. But go ahead. They are of the world. Yep. Go ahead. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. Exactly. So the things that they do, they be like, oh, that don't sound right what you're telling me. Right, because they, they can't hear what you're saying. Because they of the world. And what? We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. So when you're talking to somebody... And then they can hear you, they of God. He what? He that is not of God heareth not us. So that's just point blank. So when you're trying to show somebody something and they or they debating, they don't want to hear what you ask, they not of God. So you have that mindset to understand what you're dealing with and who you're dealing with. They not of God. But go what? Go ahead. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. See, and if you can't hear what you're saying, and what you're saying is what you've been reading out the book. Then you know the difference between the truth and the error that the people have. But let's go further. Let's go back to Psalms. Psalms 119. Psalms 119. And we're going to read one verse. One fifty one, one nineteen and one fifty one. Go ahead. Thou art near, O Lord, and all thy commandments are truth. See, now we we are starting to get to hey, these commandments. That's that is the truth, and this is the truth that's gonna set you free. See, once you start to come into the knowledge of the Lord, that's why sometimes brothers use the analogy of the matrix. You coming out of the world. You starting to be free from all that foolishness that's out there. You start to see things in a different light. This is what the now this is what do it. He said, Thou art near, O Lord, and all thy commandments are truth. It's the truth. So when you come that way, now you know who you're dealing with. And then you, you can be heard. Let's go to 1 John 2. Let's go back to 1 John. First John 2, because people think that, you know, for some for whatever reason, you, they just got it in their mind. We know it comes from the devil, that you just want to do things how you want to do it. And it don't work like that. People think, oh, yeah, I'm with God. I know God. Everybody know God. Everybody love God. Hey, God got a guideline to tell you how you, if you know him. This is how you would know him. Let's go ahead and read it. 1 John 2 and pick it up at verse 3. Go ahead. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. See, that's, that's point blank. If you keep in his command, commandments, that's all of them. That would determine where you know it. So if you go on to church tomorrow, you don't know God. It's just that simple. If you keep it, because that's part of the commandments, the fourth commandment. You got to keep the Sabbath day. So if you ain't keeping that, you don't know God. It, you know, it ain't, and I, I, my sister got, I, she got mad talking about, yeah, I ain't, you know, she was talking about, you know, I, I know God and I know God loved me and all that. I sent her that scripture. She going to say, I ain't read it. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I know you read it. I'm, I'm not going to read that. <laughs> yeah, I bet. You can't just willy-nilly in there and try to do it how you want to do it. This will tell you if you know God. I know it made her angry, but I don't care. Because you need to wake up. Because that's what it's all about. So he said, and hereby we do know him. We, we hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. That's an if. If you keep the commandments, you know God. Plain and simple. That's why the Bible says simplicity. Because if you don't, Keep the commandments, you don't know God. That's simple. It's elementary. Verse 4. 
He that said, I know him, and keep it not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Yeah, I put that one in there too with it, though. <laughs> she was real mad after that. <laughs> yeah, because she was claiming God, boy. And you throw that in there, boy. That, that, that's a throwing and throwing in your side. Like, yeah, okay, I got something for you. But hey, sometimes it takes that for you to wake up. Let's go to John 4. You know, they say, why can't we just be in harmony? Why can't things just be at peace and we just accept stuff? No, it's not about accepting. Like I said, it's not about accepting what I say or what anybody says. It's about accepting what God says. We're supposed to be obedient to this. Forget about harmony on what you do and you do. I respect everything. I respect everybody. I love everybody. I, man, God said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Do you, you don't do that, then you ain't respecting God. If you, don't, if you don't keep his commandments, then there ain't no respect there. So what happened to your respect and love? And, you know, I respect and love, but I won't do that by respect and love. Then if you ain't no doer of the word, then, you, then what are you? You disrespecting God. So don't come to me with that. John 4, and pick it up at verse 5. This is, this is Jesus out here. Go ahead, 4, 4 and 5, because this is the state of the world where people is at. This is, this is about the woman at the well. We're going to go ahead and read through this. Go ahead, 4 and 5. Go ahead. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well. And it was about the sixth hour. So he was about the sixth hour of the day he sat on the well, but go ahead. There cometh the woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me the drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Well, this story basically, you know, the ten tribes were taken away, so then these, these other people were put in the place of there. And so, the, you know, two tribes that was there, Scattered with the Levites and so forth. They didn't deal with them because they knew they wasn't really true Jews. So this has been going on for the longest. People claiming they Jews and they not. See, but it's what happened when as time go on, you've been in the land for so long, or you've been believing a lie, hey, you start to take it as true facts. And it's not. So she believed that she was. She was she was part of Israel. But go ahead. So she's talking to Jesus. Now she's talking to God right here. But go ahead. Jesus answered and said unto her. If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that said to thee, Give me the drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. See, see, and this is way over her head. But hey, she thinks she knows something, so that's what happens. You know, it happens to you all the time. You sit up there, you're trying to talk to somebody, they think they know, they want to try to tell you something. So they think they know something. You be trying to show them something, they don't, even, they don't, they don't know the difference between Genesis and Revelation. But they're going to tell you something. You say, let me, let, me, let me show you. No, no, let me show you something. So that's what's happening. She's talking to God, trying to tell him something. But go ahead. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou this living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob? See, she thinks she's part of Israel, because Jacob was the father of 12 tribes of Israel. But hey, she thinks she knows something, but she don't. But go ahead. Which gave us the well and drank thereof himself. And his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water, water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. So you know this is way over her head, but go ahead. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not. Neither come hither to draw. So he's like, she thinks she's going to get some physical water that's gonna make her, that she can drink and never be thirsty again. But go ahead. Jesus said unto her, Go, call thy husband and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands. I ain't going to even get into this, but go ahead. And he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that saidest thou truly. So he told her, yeah, you didn't, 
Trust me, you have five husbands. The one you with right now, he ain't, he ain't, it ain't got to that point yet. <laughs> what did the woman say after that? The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. So he told her, hey, you saying this is the place where men should be worshiping that. Now, after he didn't told her a little bit about herself, that's what happened when you notice that happened to us all the time. You show somebody real stuff. So, oh, first they, they combating with you with the scriptures. Then finally when you show something, you say, oh, you know a little something, huh? Oh, okay. Now they want to try to smooth you over. And that's what, she, what she's doing here. She's saying, oh, well, you say, you know, say our father worships, he said, our father worships in this mountain. And ye say, <laughs> go ahead, that what? That in Jerusalem is the place where men are to worship. See, that's how they do you when they talk to you. After they figure like you got some knowledge and they try to make it seem smooth. Like, oh, yeah, I'm on your side. I'm with you. But go ahead. Jesus said unto her, woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. So he told her, he said, woman, listen, <laughs> he just got tired of it. Believe me, <laughs> it's going to come a time you're not going to be here. Tell it, but see, this is this is the state of the world right here. This is what goes on all day long. 22. Ye worship, ye know not what. See, most of the people don't know what they worship. They don't know. But what? We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. See, when you start reading stuff like this, because when you start talking about anything about Israel or Jews, people just be like, huh? What? 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 Who? But then you read this here, they get stunned. We're like, ain't it about all about salvation? Yeah. Well, well, you can't get it unless you go through the Jews. And this is according to Jesus, right? Yes, sir. You can't get around this. Then they, they stuck. But go ahead. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. See, that's, that's what it takes. If you think you can just do it any old kind of way you want to do it, it don't work like that. You got to worship God in spirit. And in truth, if you're not dealing with the spirit and the truth, you, you're dealing with a lie. And then you're dealing with Satan. That's just, it's plain and simple that way. But go ahead. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And, and there's no other way to go about it. If you're not dealing with the truth, you're not dealing with God, point blank. And if you ain't got the truth, then you ain't free. you still bound by Satan. John 17. It's a sad thing to be practiced religion and going to church and you end up in a lake of fire. That's, that's terrible. But then again, they love to have it like that. So, hey, do you, as they say. John 17, I'm going to read that one verse. 17 and 17. Go ahead, brother. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So we know the word is truth. We heard, we heard the commandment is truth. So this is what we need to do. We, we want to know what to try to choose, how, what's going to set you free. It's the truth. It's the word. And you have to do it. You have to be sanctified, which means to be set apart. So you set yourself apart from all other stuff. Just like right now, we all shut down, turn the TVs off. We focus in on God. We disconnect from the world. And trust me, it's a blessing because I need all the rest I can get. Don't call me asking for nothing. <laughs> People call me up all the month because I'm electricity by trade. People don't know. Stuff broke. Oh, I ain't got this. Hey, you're going to have to get by. Doorbell don't work. Buzzer don't work. Hey. And it's a blessing because I don't have to think about those things. I could just, hey, focus on God. Focus on his word. Renew my mind. And that's what we all need. Let's go, to, let's go back to the Old Testament. Let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah 53. You know, they always try to, like I say, put their they foot on our neck. And it's to their detriment. Because as long as we're down, the world is going to be down. Praise the Lord, we have some teachers, man, that can actually teach us the truth. Isaiah 
Isaiah 1 and pick it up at verse 2. Go ahead. Because he did tell us to go back and read the prophets, right? We're going to read, we ring something. Isaiah 1 and 2. Go ahead. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I have nursed and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. Yeah, that's what happens all the time, mainly with Israel, but go ahead. The ox knoweth his, his owner, and the ass his master's crib, but Israel does not know. My people does not consider. That's why I said when I heard that music playing. I'm like, dude, you guys don't even know who y'all are. You don't even know what's going on. He's telling you an ox. The ox know his, he's telling you, you ain't smarter than an ox. He said, an ox know his own and the ass is master crib. But Israel do not know. They don't even, matter of fact, they just don't, they don't even consider it. Can care less. Everybody, you know, all the nationalities want to take hold of Israel, but Israel. You tell Israel they Israel, they be like, I ain't no Israelite. What are you talking about? It's, it's crazy. But hey, they the only one. They don't consider. So he's telling you that. But go ahead. Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backwards. And you can see that right now today. We dying in droves out there. Things happen. Like the little kid dying in the mattress. Just terrible stuff happened to us. But we don't care. So that's why I have that attitude. Like, you, you like it like this. So anytime you don't bring no, no terrible event to me, because I'm going to tell you what time it is. You, want it, you, you love it like this. Because if you didn't, you would change. But you don't want to change because you like to have it so. And this is what I, let's go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel 22. Ezekiel 22. We're going to read that one verse. 22 and 26. Go ahead, brother. Her priests have violated my law and have profaned mine holy things. That's hey, you talk about people talking about they holy. Hey, hey, the Lord said, hey, they profane it. And what else? They have put no difference between the holy and profane. Nope. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean. Hey, hey everything's all good. Everything's clean. They ain't put no difference between it. Go talk to the average person. They don't know nothing about clean and unclean. They, they don't even know what that is. It's like you speaking a foreign language to them. Clean and unclean. What's that? You further away. But go ahead. What else? And have hid their eyes from my Sabbath. Man, they decide, hey, I ain't, I ain't doing that. Not even just that. I'm going to make up a new Sabbath. <laughs> go ahead. And I am profaned among and, them. And, and that's what happens. So once, once the priest is like that, hey, and everybody starts to teach those things, and they get perpetual like that, hey, we're in a bad state. Let's go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 32. We're going to read one verse here. 32 and 26. Go ahead, brother. I said, I will scatter them in the corners. I will make them, I will make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. So he said, he going to scatter us in the corners. And we in the fold, and we, we scattered all over in the nations. And trust me, we, we have to cease among men. Nobody know who we are. And the ones you think, they said, they just some crazy people over there. The memory of us have to see. The Lord just showing you this. This is prophecy. He's showing you exactly what's going on. That's why we're nobody people. Because he said, I, he said I, I said I would scatter them in corners. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. That's why when people talk about they don't even know who you are. They just said you're a color. You're a crayon. you black. you African American. That's what you are. I think Jesse Jackson came up with that. You had to just make up something. He was, when he came up with I am somebody, 
He was like, I am somebody. Was, who, who's somebody else? We're African Americans. That's what we are. That's the body, somebody we are. Crazy. But then God said, hey, I'm going to erase them. He erased your, who you are. He erased it among men. So men don't know who you are. But hey, that's our own doing. Let's go to Romans chapter 11. But then again, hey, we know when you look at this, it's a blessing because, hey, the Lord ain't going to leave us in this state. But it's Romans here who, who call themselves the priests. They was trying to take over even back then. But Paul had to show them something. 11 and 25. Go ahead, my brother. For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits. That blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles become. So now, become when you, so now when you start to understand the truth, you start to know, hey, we're in the time of the Gentiles. And at this point, hey, Israel is blind. But he tell them, hey, by part. But he said he's going to make the members of us to cease among men, right? Mm -hmm. So that part is ceased. But then he said, hey, he said, here, for I would not you be ignorant, 25, that you should not be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceit, that blindness in part has happened in Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles come in. Well, that means when their iniquity is filled and it's at the end of their reign, then the whole Israel as a whole going to know. Because right now, only a few of us. And it's blind, right? Few of us, there's just no, right? Yeah. But it's in part. So that's why he was telling you that. Verse 26. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. So we waiting on that time in the end. Because the Lord going to come. And he's going to turn away all that iniquity and evil that Israel is doing. So that's why when people talk to me, it's like, or you start to have the spirit of God and start to understand what the Lord is doing. You see what's going to happen on the end. So you just like, you just wait. But then that's having, that's having the truth. And that's setting you free. It's setting your mind free because you understand events. You understand things that's going on. You know what's happening and you know the end of it. See, a lot of times people talk about stuff, but they never give you a solution to the problem. They just want to be talking about events and, you know, what happened and this going on and that. I, I can care less. I'm telling you what's, what's, what you need to do. And we want to get to the point where you solve the problem. We already know there's problems out in the world. We know stuff is going on. We know it's killing and stealing and lying. We're reading in the scripture, it says blood touches blood, right? So we see all that stuff going on. I'm not going to have no sympathy. It's sad. I feel bad. But at the end of the day, it is going on. And why would you say, oh, brother, you harsh. How can you be like that? You see the Lord, right? The Lord knows what's going on, right? Did the Lord stop it? All right. That's just plain and simple. The Lord see, he could do it, right? Yeah, he could do it. Did he stop it? No. Okay. He letting it go on, right? Yeah, all right. Change. Because, see, people don't want to get to the point. They just want to still just dibble and dabble. I don't know, I'm going to make y'all some mean people, but <laughs> they just dibble and dabble. Nobody want to solve the problem. They just want to talk. Dude, what do you want to do? You want to politic with me or something? You want to go back and forth? This is politics. what you want to do. You want to politic? That's not, that's not going to solve nothing. It's not going to help the cause. You got to get yourself together. That's what's going to help. So every time y'all see somebody want to talk to somebody, what are you doing? You going to straighten yourself out? They ain't going to talk to you no more, though. <laughs> You're you going to be lonely then. <laughs> but it is what it is. Let's go for it. <laughs> Second Corinthians. That's what happened, though. People, you come in, people start walking the other way. Second Corinthians, like, uh-oh, here she and that brother, there they come. <laughs> they be talking and whispering in the corner by themselves for you walk in the door. You already know what it is. Second Corinthians 11. But this is what happened. You know, most of the people got this Jesus here. Second Corinthians 11, and pick it up at verse 1. 11 and 1. Go ahead, brother. Would to God you could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me. 
for I am jealous over you with God with with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. And now we didn't see that it's it's simple, right? We done came up that it's, it's real easy, and he's letting you know from the beginning. So like we read and we read in Revelations, right? Yeah. We started off, hey, Satan deceived the whole world. So if you start to get to that point, now you can understand, hey, you're already wrong. You know, don't go to the point where, you know, I, I, you know, I thought, I just talked to my brother all the time. He started telling me about stuff, about stuff, no, I thought it was like this. Or now you know what he do? He come over and he asks me, is this right? Is that is that what is that what they say? Is that but <laughs> but before years ago he 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 had all the answers. Now he's like, should I should I should I do that? Is that is that the right way? You know, <laughs> but he, you know he ain't gonna do what he's supposed to do. But 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 at least he get on the point of action. <laughs> I'm gonna get back on him again, you know. But hey, it is what it is. We well, go ahead. What verse you at, bro? Four. Go ahead. For if he that cometh preacheth, preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached. And that's what happened. You know, you go to church on Sunday, that's another Jesus. He died on Easter Sunday. <laughs> he, I mean, rose on Easter Sunday. Yeah. It don't matter. Ain't numbers all messed up anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it, it, you know, it's, it's just, it's crazy. I try not even keep counting that foolishness. All these days that come up and going, I don't even mean, I don't even know. He born on December 25th, right? That's, that's this Jesus. This is the Jesus they keep right here. He ain't, he ain't in here. Not in this book. Oh, well, yeah, he right here, right? Yeah, he right here. But go ahead. Or if you receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. And trust me, that's the gospel they got. But go ahead. Is that it? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's that's. That's it in a nutshell. That's the gospel they dealing with. The world pretty much they dealing with that other Jesus. You know, just because you call on his name, it don't mean you got the right one. You to see, he says another one out there. They didn't took hold of that one. He loved you. He gonna bless you. All you gotta do is repeat after me, brother. Say these words. And you're gonna be all right. The Lord going he gonna take care of you. You know you say, brother. <laughs> That's that crazy stuff, man. You look at that stuff. We like, you need some holy water, brother. <laughs> like these people, boy, y'all, y'all crazy for real. They look at me, like, I'm crazy, cause I'm, I'm, I'm. He preaching hate and kill and die. Yeah, well, that's what the Lord doing. You see it on the street all the time. And you don't need to preach. You can just get you some popcorn and open the window. It's there. Turn on the news if you don't like to open the window. Bullet might go there, so don't go to the window. <laughs> Turn the TV on. It might be a little better for you. Let's go further. Let's go to Titus. We're in a bad state. But I tell you, I'm going to make y'all leave them. Because you're going to be like, y'all gonna, people going to have some, please have some sympathy for me. You're going to be like, nah. Do what you're supposed to do. What, what are you going to be like? What about your prayer life? What are you doing? What about your life? Don't worry about mine. You need to worry about you. Titus 1. Titus 1. And pick it up at verse 13. 1 and 13. Go ahead, my brother. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply that they may, may be sound in the faith. Not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men see, that turn from the truth. See, that's, that's always been going on, having fables. That's, that's, all the fa that's all they got right now. We already know what fables is, right? Yeah. That's, that, that's wholesale. Fat guy in a red suit, beard, no, that, that's all fables. But go ahead. Unto the pure, all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. Yep, so you, your whole mindset is off. 
Do people doing all that foolishness? It's off. But hey, that's what happened. When you start to steer away from God, you start. It's only one way. It's only one way to deal with the truth. Anything else you mix in there, it ain't the truth. It's a lie. Satan did that in the beginning, right? Told, you know, Eve she wasn't going to die, right? Yeah. Then he also told she was going to be God. So you mixing it in. That lie is always mixed in. So it's going it's to end at the end. It ended up messing you up. Read that last verse. Go ahead. They profess that they know God. Everybody do, right? Yeah. We all know God, right? Everybody knows God, right? But we already know how you know God, right? Yeah. We didn't read that. Because you can't just do lip service and say what you think and say, you know, I'm, 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 I know God. I know. No, we, it, it's a way to know God. And we read it, right? Yes, sir. So once you go down that path, you can, you can cut all the theatric out. We can get down to the crooks of the matter. Go and finish that, man. But in works, they deny him. Exactly, because that's what it takes. You got to do something. You got to be a doer of the word. You can't just talk about it. A lot of people talk all day long. You know what they call it? You can talk a good game, you know? People talk good game, great games. Like they know a lot, do a lot, and be about a lot. But when you get, when you get down to the end, they, you ain't about nothing. <laughs> he said they profess that they know God, but in works, they deny him. Being abominable, what else? And disobedient, and unto every good work, reprobate. And when you go to that point, your mind, you start losing your mind. If you decide that you don't want something, I'll tell you, the Lord don't play with you. If you, you decide you don't want it, he won't give it to you. He'll give you what you want. If you want to be evil, he'll give you that, because that's how good God is. God's so good, he give you evil. If you want to be a murderer or a crook or a thief, I'll make you the best you ever seen. Because it ain't going to be said, hey, if you want to be righteous and blessed, I want that, right? I, I want to be a crook. Oh, there you go. You'll be the best thief. God give it to you. Blessing and curse, both in the same, one in the same. But you already know the outcome if you go down that road. Let's go further. Let's go to 2 Peter. Second Peter, two, and pick it up at verse one, two and one. Go ahead, brother. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies. And that, and this is going on. This is the beautiful thing about the Bible is, as it go on, people do the same thing. You want to be saying the same thing. You can go from the East Coast to the West Coast. They got the same old line, which is good because we know we know what to deal, what to say, and to deal with that foolishness, right? Yeah. He said, "But there's false." He said, "But there was false prophets among the people, even as there should be false teachers among you, and who and do what? Who shall privately, who who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them." And bring up themselves swift destruction. Yeah, that's exactly what they do all the time. I don't believe mostly like them Hebrew brothers. They, when you you still dealing with that Jesus man? Yeah. I'm like, bruh, hey, they got some. They gonna bring in some destruction coming to their way. Go ahead. And many shall follow their pernicious ways. And that's a bad thing because you start getting people like that. They start to, people. If you weak minded, you start to follow. You fall off. Go ahead. By reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. When they do that, trust me, I didn't seen somebody say some crazy stuff. They didn't do some of the old school Hebrews. You know, I was parked out, you know, had my car out there. And I think one of the kids, my car was dirty, and one of the children had wrote, like, Israel on my car. And I guess one of the old school, one of these crazy Hebrews that don't believe in Jesus saw that on there. He was like, he came over to talk to me. I was on my way to church. It was a Sabbath, too. And he was like, I saw Israel on there, brother. Yeah, you know a little something. Man, we started to talking, man. I started to find, I started to open the book up, and he got a little mad with me, you know, because what he was saying wasn't lining up. Mm -hmm. he, it, so he couldn't deal with the book, so he was like, I'm going to tell you something about that Jesus. That Jesus can, man, he started talking crazy. But then right here it says evil spoken of. I mean, he was saying some stuff that Jesus, he can. I said, let me get away from this brother for lightning. Knock this brother <laughs> on his butt. Let me leave, boy. Boy, Israel crazy. I ain't seen some people. I've been around some Gentiles, but they just go way to the left, boy. But 
But then again, it's evil spoken of. That's what it said. But go ahead. Three. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. Tomorrow, boy, they're going to be getting paid, baby. Man, they're going to be eating you up. They, they like, it's, like, it's like they lock the doors, bro. <laughs> Pass the plate around. You don't even get out. They have us just standing at the door blocking it. <laughs> you ever notice that? Be standing posted up at the door. Be like, you can't even get out the door. <laughs> and pass that boy, try to scare you a little bit, pass it by on you, boy. Ain't playing. We just blocking the doors. So we don't want nobody to come in. <laughs> yeah, right. No, y'all blocking. Y'all want nobody to go out. <laughs> so they making merchandise. He said, and through covetousness, they sell with vain words. Because they ain't already lied to you, right? They making merchandise of you. Who's what? Whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not. And their damnation slumbereth not. Hey, the Lord going to deal with them people. He got something for you if you don't do what you're supposed to do. But let's go further. Let's go. Four, bro. Is that four? No, no, no. You good. Three. Okay. Let's go to Jeremiah 5. Jeremiah 5. Pick it up at verse 1. 5 and 1. Go ahead. Run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem, and see now and know, and see in the broad places thereof, if ye can find a man, if there be any that executed judgment, that seeketh the truth, and I will pardon it. So the Lord said, hey, just go, go out there. He tells you, go out there and look. Well, we could do the same thing. You can just go out there and look and see if anybody going to do what's right. The result's going to be the same. Go ahead. And though they say the Lord liveth, surely they swear falsely. And they all, they all, they're going to they gonna be all about the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, right? Yeah. But hey, they living falsely. At the end of the day, that's what it is. But go ahead. O Lord, are not thine eyes upon the truth? Thou hast stricken them, but they have not grieved. Thou hast consumed them. But they have, they have refused to receive correction. We see that all the time. You try to tell somebody something, they ain't trying to hear. But this is Israel. Hey, go ahead. They have made their faces harder than a rock. They have refused to return. Therefore I said, surely these are poor. They are foolish. For they know not the way of the Lord, nor the judgment of their God. And see, I read these things here, man, so that you can see and understand. We need to, we need to feel some of this pain. Because the Lord trying to teach you and trying to correct you and trying to get you to understand and do right, and you just keep rejecting. You just keep saying, hey, I don't care. So then it makes, it makes you stern and hard because you want it that way. So I like to read this a lot of times because people don't want to change. So we just see how they just say, Lord, we don't want to do it. 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 We're going to do our own way. So then I read fire, fire, fire. Burn. Hey, that's the result. That's what happened. That's what happened with us. That's what happened to your children. What happens to you, what you do to your children, even you do to your children if they don't do what's right. You got to get out of here. I'm not dealing with you in that. So even what you think the Lord is going to do? He gonna say, hey, he ain't going to do no difference. He just got some of this thing called Lake of Fire that you don't want a part of. That's all. But hey. He said, you can, you can go there if you, if you choose to. But that was it, right, bro? Yes, sir. Let's move further. Let's go to Malachi. Malachi 2. Malachi 2. Pick it up at verse 6, 2 and 6. Go ahead, my brother. The law of truth was in his mouth, and iniquity was not found in his lips. He walked with me in peace and, and equity, and did turn away, turn many away from iniquity. That's, that's what's supposed to go on. That's, that's what the law does for you. But go ahead. 
for the priest's lips should keep knowledge and they should seek the law at his mouth for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. That's right. Go ahead, brother. But ye are departed out of the way. You know, ye, I was going to get to this part, right? Go ahead. Cause you ain't going to listen, but go ahead. You have caused many to stumble at the law. You have corrupted the covenant of Levi said the Lord of hosts. Therefore have I also made you corruptible and base before all the people. See what the Lord do to you. If you don't want to listen, see, see what your reward would be. Go ahead. According as ye have not kept my ways, but have been partial in the law. Have we not all one father? That's what we say, right? You got all these different denominations, right? All these yeah. different church, got all these different things. But he said, right, have not we all one father? If we got one father, that should be one way, right? right. There should be one way we should be doing things. Not, you know, I respect all. I respect you. I respect you. But, but you doing that respect, I never would disrespect you. Said, we should be doing the same thing. You should have to worry about no disrespect. It's only one, one father, right? Yeah. To have what? Had not one God created us? Right. We all believe in that, right? Yeah. Go ahead. Why do we deal treacherously every man against his brother by profaning the covenant of our fathers? Exactly. That's what happens. Because if you're not doing the laws and statutes of God, that's what's going to end up happening anyway. So like I said, I ain't got no sympathy for you. You ain't getting none from me. Jeremiah 7. You know, it's a bad, we're in a bad state of affairs, but hey, this is, hey, this is, this is the way we love it as a whole. I know we don't, the ones that's in the truth and have some understanding, I know we, we not like that, but hey, as a whole, man, that's where we at. We can care less. We refuse to listen. So, this is going to be our state. Go ahead, 28. But thou shalt say unto them. This is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their God, nor receiveth correction. Truth is perished and is cut off from their mouth. Hey, it ain't no truth, and it's cut off from them. But like I say, this is the way we want to have it. We refuse to do right, so hey, you got to make it up in your mind if you want to serve God or not. You want to live in the truth or not. Most people live in a lie their whole life. You got to make it up in your mind if you want to do right. And if you don't, hey, that's, that's your business, man. You want some fire? Get some. Joshua 24. And Joshua going to make it plain right here. We want to make things where you know, it's suitable for us, suitable how we feel, how we want things to be, how we want to deal with things. It don't work that way. Joshua 24, and pick it up at verse 14. Go ahead, brother. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. But we read that, right? You got to serve the Lord in truth, right? Spirit and in truth, right? Yes, sir. Go ahead. And put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood. Look at that. This is out there. This is in the wilderness. They didn't get, get, in the, get ready to get into the land. They still got these false gods, man. But then they, hey, that still goes on today. So it ain't nothing new. He said, now therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood. And in what? And in Egypt. And serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it seems evil. You tell somebody, hey, you, you know, you can't work on the Sabbath. You can't shut your store down. You can't make no money. You got to stop work. That seemed evil to them. Like, man, I need, I need that money, man. I, I got to pay for this. this uh, They're going to turn this off. That's, uh, that some seem evil. So he said, if it seem evil unto you, what? To serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house. What are you going to do? He said, because at the end of the day, after I tell you, look in the mirror, right? He said, you can choose what you want to do. You go ahead and make your choice. But for me and my house, what are you going to do? We will serve the Lord. He said, me and my house, we serving God. 
So you go ahead and do you. But we're going to serve the Lord over here. Let's go to John 18. We almost done. John 18. This was Jesus when he was about to be crucified. He, he was speaking with Pilate. We're going we're gonna to get some insight in here. John 31, 8 and 31. Go ahead, my brother. 18 or 31, I'm sorry. Is that 8? That's it. It's 18. 18, 28. Okay, go ahead. Then led they Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment, and it was early. And they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, but they, did, they might eat the Passover. Notice they was keeping the Passover. But go ahead. Pilate then went out unto them and said, What accusation bring ye against this man? They answered and said unto him, If he were not a, a male factor, we would, have we would not have delivered him up unto thee. See, they just lied on him right there, because that ain't that just say somebody who broke the law, but he didn't. But go ahead. Then said Pilate unto them, Take ye him, and judge him according to your law. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death, that the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spake, signifying what death he should die. Go ahead. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again, and called Jesus and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? So he went and asked him, he said, Are you the king of the Jews? Look what Jesus' response is going to be. Go ahead. Jesus answered him, saying, Thou this thing, sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it, of, tell it thee of me? So he, he asked him this question. Pilate, he said, 33, Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? So he asked him, he said, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered, saying, Thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell thee of me? See, that's the problem a lot of times. People always get what somebody else say and not reading for themselves. That's what gets you twisted up all the time. I was talking to a um, lady, trying to show her some stuff in the book. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm hitting scriptures, showing the scriptures out the scriptures. I mean, I, it's just like she was getting tired of hearing me reading through the book. She was like, just, she grabbed my hand. Son, just, just, you don't have to open the book up. Just, just tell me. Just, just, just speak it. That's what they used to. I mean, she actually told me, just stop. You ain't, I don't, I don't want you to read it out of here. Just, just tell me what you think. Just tell me. <laughs> but that's, that's the state. He said, Jesus, in 34, he said, Jesus has to say if thou think of thyself, or did others tell thee of me? So did somebody tell you that, or do you know? And most of the time, it's what people tell you. That's why when people try to talk to you and explain the Bible, it's like, it's in there somewhere, because somebody told you something. You didn't read it. You don't know. You going off what somebody said or what you thought somebody said. You're going to go wrong every time. 35. Pilate answered, am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus now, answered. Jesus, he about to give him some truth right here. You want to see some truth? Here it is. Go ahead. My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight. Who, who tell you and teach you about Jesus coming to fight? What they tell you that? Last I heard, they supposed to be rapturing you off to heaven, right? He going to sneak you up out of here. The rapture, you just going to be gone. You just, you just gonna be, you gonna be one day. You gonna be there, brother. And you just gonna be out of there. No, that ain't what he said. He said, "This is my kingdom. We are gonna be boxing, right?" So, but then we read right. Corinthians, what Paul was talking about the other Jesus. They've been reading about him, yeah. not this one here. He said, "Jesus answered in thirty six. My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then will my servants fight? That what? That I should not be delivered to the Jews." But now is my kingdom not from hence. So he's telling him, hey, this ain't the time for that. But he's letting you know, hey, it's going to come a time when I'm going to go upside y'all head. But not right now. <laughs> it ain't going to happen now. But it's going to happen. But go ahead. Pilate therefore said unto him, 
Art thou a king then? So he he still stuck on that because hey, they you know he, you know when you're a king, you're a ruler. So I don't want you to be ruler. So he said, so you so you know I heard all of that, you know, but then I want to know, are you a king? But go ahead. Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. So we see what the truth is, right? Go ahead. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. We ain't heard that noon's time, right? So if they can't hear you, they're not of God, right? So everybody that's of God, hey, you hear his voice. That's why we're here, right? We're here on the Sabbath day, right? Because we heard his voice say, hey, keep this commandments, right? So you're going to keep the Sabbath day because that's God's voice. And if you can hear God's voice, you're going to do it, and you're going to be a disciple of God. Go ahead. Finish that. 38, right? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Pilate said unto him, what is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and said unto them, I find in him no fault at all. Pilate was like, man, <laughs> he oh, man, this, good, this guy right here, he ain't even trying to get away. He ain't did nothing. No, I don't find no fault in him. He knew it. But go ahead. But look how wicked they are. That was that it? Yes, sir. That was it. Okay, let's go further. Let's go to John 8. This is where the title of the lesson came from. John 8. And pick it up at verse 31, 8 and 31. Go ahead. Because he was fighting. He was always going back and forth with the religious leaders. He always had a, t a, a, a tussle with them. Because, hey, they didn't want to do what thus said the Lord. And people think, you know, when Jesus, we know Jesus died, he died for our sins, and he died to bring us to him, but, hey, they killed him. And it was religious people that killed him. They tried to make it even pretty. You know, he died on the cross for our sins. No, they crucified him and put him on a tree because the religious people didn't want to deal with the doctrine of God, which is the same thing today. They, they, they can care less about God's word, and that's the mindset of people. They want to do what they want to do. So that's the state we're going to be in, and it's practical what's going to happen. John 8 and 31. Go ahead, brother. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. That's right. That's how you're getting free, by dealing with God's word. But go ahead. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest you, ye shall be made free? See, they're not getting it. They're not getting it. But then again, hey, they, they can't hear it, right? We read that, right? If people of God hear God's word, right? Yes, they ain't of God because they can't understand what he's saying. But we understand it. Go ahead. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed. So he told him, he said, I know you come from Abraham. Abraham is your forefather. I know that. But what? But ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. Exactly. That's happened all the time. You start, see, like I told you, like, brother, you start showing them some scriptures in there, they start to get real violent. He didn't come physical, but verbally he abused me. But, hey, it is what it is. But that's what happened. You start showing them some word. You start showing them what does said the Lord. They get frustrated. And that's why he was showing them the book. He said, but you seek to kill me because my word have no place in you. 38. I speak that which, which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them. Now, we already, they still on the physical part. They still, they ain't get it. But then again, you can't hear them, right? Yeah. Go ahead. Jesus said unto them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. Because faith without works is dead, right? So you got to do something. You can't just talk about it. You can't have lip service. You have to do something. Go ahead. But now you seek to kill me, a man that had told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. He said, Abraham didn't do that, but go ahead. Ye do the deeds of your father. 
Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. But see, he did got he about right here. The Lord is getting tired of it. And he's going to talk to them plainly. But then we already, we already know why he, they came here, right? Yeah. But he's going to tell them right here, right here. Go ahead. What did Jesus say? Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. He said, why you don't understand what I'm trying to tell you? Why? Why? You can't, you, you can't hear my word. We speak in the same language, right? Why is it you can't get it? Tell them why. Go ahead. You are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. Yeah, you, you, your father's the devil. If you're not keeping his laws, statutes, and commandments, guess what? You are riding with the devil. Them are the words I'm saying. You know how they say it, right? Can you hear me now? Yeah, can you hear that? But go ahead. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinced, convinced me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's word. Which we heard, right? We know that. Go ahead. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil. That's what people do all the time. When they lose and they just, oh, well, you got, when you say, you say, you give them proof and show them their devil. Well, all they can come back and say, well, you got the devil. <laughs> Is that all you got? Is that what you're going to come with? Is that the best you got? You just repeat something? But go ahead. Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father. And ye, do, and ye do dishonor me, and I seek not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh in judgment. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my sayings, he shall never see death. Go ahead. Then said the Jews unto him, now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets. And thou sayest, if a man keep my sayings, he shall never taste death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets? Are dead, whom makest thou thou thyself? He letting them know exactly who he is, which a lot of people in a lot of religions don't know even to this day. Go ahead. Jesus answered, If I honor, if I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Go ahead. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his sayings. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. So he's he, he letting them in on something right here. Go ahead. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? See, go ahead. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Then the what? Because at first, right, they couldn't understand. They don't understand him, right? They couldn't understand his speech. They understand the word. They don't even know what he's talking about. But when he said before Abraham was, I have, they understood that. This is why. 59. Then took they up stones to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. See, this is why they're going to stone him. Let's go and read it real quick. Exodus 3. I'm getting close to time. Exodus 3. I'm going to finish that, though, bro. Was that going, it? Going through the midst of them. Yeah, so passed, passed by. by. Okay. Yeah, so he was, he was running. He was, he was ducking. Yeah, you got to make sure you get all that in there. Because they, they tried to kill him. So he ran through. He didn't get away because it wasn't his time to die at that time. But then they, under, but they understood. They say they understood, they understood this part. He said, before Abraham was, I am, right? Yeah. And they knew what he was talking about, too. We're going to read it real quick. Exodus 3. And pick it up at verse 11. 3 and 11. Go ahead, brother. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, 
and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? So this is what he was quoting, and they knew this because they read it. So go ahead. This is why they tried to stone him, but go ahead. What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. So he, he let them know, who I'm the God in the beginning. And that's why they was trying to stone him. But now let's go further. Let's go to Deuteronomy 32. They couldn't hear nothing, but they heard that. But see, you hear what you want to hear. You know, some people call that selective hearing, you know. But there's a selection five for the people who have selection hearing. You can get a part of that. Deuteronomy 32, pick it up at verse 1. 32 and, and 1. Go ahead. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. Because I will publish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness unto our God. That's right. Go ahead, brother. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment, a God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. And that's exactly what the Lord is. So if we want to deal with the truth, this is what the way we have to go. Any other way, it's not going to work. Let's go to the last scripture, Psalms 25. Psalms 25, and pick it up at verse 4. 25 and 4. Go ahead, my brother. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth, and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Yeah, because that's what we need. We need the Lord to show us his way, his path. He talked about the path. We heard about the path of destruction. We want to get on that narrow path of righteousness. That's the way we want to go. So you want to be shown that way so you can get on that path. But go ahead. Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindness, for they have been ever of old. We need that, trust me, because we all be cut off. Go ahead, brother. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions, according to thy mercy. Remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. Man, praise the Lord for this one. Please don't remember the past stuff. Get that go in my youth, because I was on some foolishness. But go ahead. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore will he teach sinners in the way. Go ahead, brother. The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. And all his paths is unto righteousness. If you believe and do what thus said the Lord. I thank y'all for y'all time. Okay, yeah, uh, we got the Sabbath announcements, but also, you want to announce, you know, like they did on the second month, if you missed the Passover, it's a sign-up sheet, you can sign up, whether you, or maybe you was out of town or whatever was the case, you, it's going to be on, uh, on 5, 9, 17, it's Tuesday at sundown. You can uh, still keep the, keep the Passover because they you know they did that even in the book. If you if you happen to miss it, you can do that. Or maybe you had to get circumcised or whatever the case may be, or medical di condition, anything. We're gonna do that on five nine seventeen. All right, nothing else. We had a Sabbath announcements. Our prayer is that the eyes of your understanding were enlightened by today's lesson. DVDs and CDs of all our lessons are available. Please place your order in the offering box along with your donation and pick your DVDs, CDs up at the podium next Sabbath. Please tune in to Thy Kingdom Come television program, which airs in various locations. Please join us at our other Bible study classes. Question and answer Bible study every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time via conference call line at 712-432-1620. Access code 609910. Also stream live from our website 
thykingdomcome7.com. Children's Bible class, ages 4 through 12, every Sabbath at 12 noon. Teen Forum Bible class, ages 13 through 19, every other Sabbath, Saturday at 5 p.m. We're having Teen Forum, too, tonight. Well, it is after we close out. So, yeah, it's been a while, a long time coming. You can, you can put that on my shoulders, but go ahead. If you feel you are ready to be baptized, please sign the baptismal list at the podium and I'll speak with Brother Oscar. Following is the dress code for our services. All clothing should be modest in appearance, nothing tight fitting, overly baggy, sagging, or revealing should be worn. Men are to remove hats and all head coverings, and women should wear a hat or head covering such as a hat, wear a head covering such as a hat or scarf, according to 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 11, verses 1 through 7. If your young child becomes noisy during the lesson, distracting other members, please remove him or her to the TV monitor area in the rear of the class. Any ties and or free will offerings should be put in the offering envelope and placed in the offering box near the podium. Pray for our strength as we pray for you. Until next Sabbath, peace. Peace. All right, well, since there's nothing else, we can go ahead and stand up and face Jerusalem and close out. Our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. In earth. In earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he is good. For he is good. And his mercy endures forever. And his mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. For he is good. For he is good. And his mercy endures forever. And his mercy endures forever. In Jesus' holy name we pray. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen.